Hi, guys. Hi, Tinko. In our last class, you went over the popular punctuation traps, shortest rule first, and even discussed an example with tons of potential answer choices, some longer than others. What I still don't understand are the conditions for when breaks, commas, semicolons, and turn words are needed. Can you go over that? Why, certainly. Here are the notorious five that will show up over and over again on your next ACT. Let's start with the first one, the introduction filler. Now an introduction filler basically separates a descriptive filler from the main idea, like so. The most commonly used purpose of a comma is to separate the information between the filler and an upcoming subject. I call this my filler rule, and here, allow me to show you. In this first example, one of the greatest basketball players ever, LeBron James averaged over 27 points per game last season. Or example two, having been a scuba instructor for the Cannonball. past six years, my best friend Jeremy worked at the YMCA last summer. Example number three. After just four hours of Tutami videos, I raised my ACT score by seven points. So as you can see in each of these situations, the filler shows up in the introduction or the beginning portion, and it sounds like an incomplete descriptive phrase, which is actually describing the subject that is just around the corner. So if we take a look at this sample question now, You'll notice that we have a descriptive filler in the first half. After cleaning up the kitchen. After who cleaned up the kitchen? Oh, I know the maid or subject that follows the descriptive filler. Hence, we need a single comma to separate the filler from the subject, making C our answer. Moving on to our next instance of when to use commas, a middle filler. Now a middle filler can also be interjected into the middle of a sentence as well. Oftentimes, the subject will appear in the beginning of the sentence, followed by a filler in the middle. Like in these examples. Example number one. Tinko, a very good-looking man, <laughs> loves to teach the ACT. Example number two. Charlie, who loves his golden retriever so much that he bought a million-dollar insurance policy for it, has decided to open a doggy daycare next month. Example number three. Mark, the crazy neighbor down the street, listens to Hit Me Baby One More Time in his tank top and shorts every weekend. As you can see in this situation, the subject is in the left and the middle is the filler. Why don't we take a look at a practice question on your own? Welcome back. In this situation, C made the most sense since the descriptive filler was in the middle of the sentence. Since the subject is in the beginning, I know to use commas to caress or surround the filler. So as you can see, besides Tinko being a very good looking man, and the fact that Mark's neighbor drives him crazy, fillers that come at the beginning or the middle of a sentence require a comma or commas. One, if the filler is in the beginning, and two, if it's in the middle of the sentence. Okay, moving on to the third situation that requires a comma. We also have a rule that I call fanboys. 
If you guys heard of boy bands, fanboys represents for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. A key to being successful on the ACT is to remember that any time one of these words shows up in a sentence, and it separates two independent clauses, they require a comma. For example, I'm thinking of going to Middleton to visit my grandmother, but I need to work this weekend. Leon earned a Michelin three-star award for his cooking, so he was invited to open his own restaurant in Las Vegas. I booked a ticket on Expedia.com and I decided to upgrade my ticket from economy to business class. Ready for one on your own now? Sure. sure. Okay, welcome back. In order to answer this question, I split up the sentence into its unique clauses. I find that one of the halves is a dependent. If I read the first half, Alyssa showed up 22 hours early at the Apple store. It sounds complete to me. <laughs> now if I read the second clause alone, wanted to be the first in line for the new iPhone 6, sounds incomplete to me. Therefore, any independent matched with any dependent requires no comma, making B our answer. So who can summarize our class for us today? I think I can. Introductory fillers can appear at the beginning or middle of a sentence. Also, whenever two independent clauses use fanboys, they require a comma. The ones with a dependent clause don't require a comma. Great. In our next lesson, let's go over the remaining two instances where a comma is needed and provide a few more examples.